Howdy folks, I thought I'd make an update to my rack video. Um, it's been about a little more than a year actually since I did the update to the last rack video and I haven't really posted a whole lot this year, just been busy with work and stuff like that. So I figured I'd give you the rundown of uh, what I've got. There's a few changes that have happened. Um, so I'll start with the power like always. Uh, my mains comes into my automatic power switch here. This switch doesn't have like a service where you can turn it on and off or switch from A to B. It basically always goes back to A. Um, and um, I have A plugged into the mains and then the B plugged into my 1500VA uh, UPS down there. Um, it's a newish APC UPS with uh, brand new batteries in it though. I did replace the batteries about a month ago. Um, so just because of age, they weren't going bad or anything. So, um, next down is the switch here. Um, the PDU, it's just for providing me a couple more, um, outlets within the rack that go mostly to the, to the, uh, uh networking equipment, the servers and everything plug directly into, into the to main one here. Um. Uh, next would be my Avocent DSR 1020. Um, love that thing. Still doing really good. Still connected to everything in the server that's turned on. I have been on a bit of a virtualization path, journey. Um, so I virtualized a lot of the stuff that used to have independent servers or independent computers that were in the rack. Not anymore. Still have DevBox. Still do some backup and data recovery and stuff like that. Um, you know, utilizing the drive cages and and it it does pretty good. Um, it's still there because I used it about two weeks ago. Um, a buddy of mine had a drive that uh, had been formatted incorrectly and uh, we needed to recover the stuff off of it. And it, this has some licensed recovery software um, that is tied to the hardware. So uh, I tried to virtualize it and still get it to run, but it just doesn't, you just can't interface correctly with the uh, SATA devices and stuff, so it would not work. Um, next down, my old Plex server, it's still there, it's not doing anything, has not turned on since probably May or June. Um, uh, other than I did, I think I turned it on a couple weeks ago just to do like Windows 10 updates and stuff like that. But um, next down is Orosi. This used to be my Unraid server when I migrated from my old Silverstone box into this. Super easy migration, basically just move the drives, move the, the, the USB drive and boot it up and it, it worked. Um, it was fine. Um, I had to move on from it, came, ran, kept running into some limitations. Um, it doesn't support um, PCI Express bifurcation. So there were some things I couldn't do because um, I wanted to use hardware in a certain way. It also only has PCI Express by eight lanes or you know sockets on it. And so I couldn't find a good GPU that would work really well to be able to do like TDAR and stuff like that on a, as a VM on Unraid. Um, so I decided, hey, another server came up, my brand new, well, new to me anyway, uh, DL380 Gen 9 the large form factor here guy um that is my new now acting as my new uh unraid server um basically just brought all the drives over added some extra storage too which i'll explain in a little bit but um yeah that's pretty much the story on here so it's trying to find something to do with it right now um don't know what this is my keyboard mouse slide out thing this is not the super expensive kvm models like from trip light and those things this is just like some sort of no name brand thing it's just literally a keyboard and a, and a mouse and a video plug on the back of it and that goes to my abosynt and from there i can log into things on the rack uh chato is my plex server it is only doing plex as of now um it is a uh, DL360 Gen 9. Let's see, I got the stats for it here. It's uh, Chato 
is a Xeon E5 2650L V4 uh, single processor. So that's 14 cores, 28 threads. It's got 256 gigs of RAM in it. Doesn't really need that much RAM, but it's there. It is the HP Enterprise RAM. So, you know, it's happy with the RAM. So I'm just going to leave it. Um, next down, like I mentioned, that is my new server. Uh, it's called Tenorio. Um, Tenorio is the uh, DL380 Gen 9, like I said. Uh, it has two Xeon E5 2608L V4 processors. So that's only 1.6 gigahertz. Um, but it's, you know, 16 cores, 28 threads. Uh, it is hardware locked to only doing the, uh, you know, BIOS locked, or the power is locked to only do the 1.6 gigahertz. So it won't, it won't ramp up. But with that many cores, I've got five, no, six VMs running. Um, I moved, I had to recreate all the VMs, but I moved them all over to Unraid. So they're running in Unraid now, a combination of some Linux ones, some, some Windows, and um, I even spun up a Debian one, but I'm not, I'm not very familiar with that. So I just along for the ride, not doing anything. But um, I moved TDAR onto this. Uh, so I'm doing all my Plex transcoding and everything, and that way I can leave the server running and leave the VM running and just use the schedules within TDAR to like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the day when I'm generating extra solar and all that good stuff. It kicks on and does its thing and, and just grabs and compresses the video down to 265 for me. Um, the other servers is Turialba. Turialba is still like got some VMs on it, but they don't, it's not on right now because all the VMs that were on here now live in uh, Tenorio in the, the Unraid server. So clock's ticking, right? Um, the bottom one down here, that one is actually kind of decommissioned right now. Um, it's called Barba. It's, a, it's also a, a DL380, but it's a Gen 8. Um, and it's, it's okay. It, it, it's kind of like if this would be my lifeboat if something really went bad with Durialba. Um, so it's just there. Um, down below that is just my disc shelf. Uh, I think I've only got like three or four spots available on it now. It's getting really, really full. Um, and it's just where I store all my old drives. And if I ever needed to power them back up, I can just hit the power button here. And, um, there's a, that's one of the other reasons why I wanted to go with, uh, the new Unraid was I couldn't find a really good external SAS controller that allow me to connect to my drive shelf, uh, with any kind of relatively decent speeds, um, in the event that I do need to power this on to grab some data off of it. Um, I just couldn't do it in the, in the old, in the old, uh, in Orosi. It just didn't, it didn't have a physical space. My drive card, I mean, if you look, I mean, that's a massive card. Why they needed so much real estate, I don't know, but that's just a big card and it just would not fit in there. It's A, it's full height and, you know, just would not fit, but um, it will fit in there. So I'll be moving that one over next. Um, I uh, uninvert inadvertently damaged my exterior cable, so. I don't have the cable right now anyway. I pinched it at the door and broke it. So it is what it is. Um, down there, that's just computer storage. Some disk shelf down there as well. Um, old computers and stuff. Yeah, just, just storage. Um, so that's it for the server side um, of the, the cabinet. I'll show you really quick the, sorry the networking side so top shelf there is where my kvm ties in to the back rack um i just tied in all the points and then from here i can go to you know temporary uh kvm ones plug something in as you can see here so that's the back of of the old unraid and it's just everything's disconnected um, this is my pf sense router here um and then i have a cloud key XG16 48 port switch from Unify 
all the rest of the networking equipment in the, in the property is all Unify, uh, including cameras and all that stuff. So that's pretty much the back of the racks there. I got all the cable management arms. And that's just the back of some of those storage computers that are down there. Um, and that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.